vast, pristine, and mostly unexplored by the franchise. Whitetail Woods extends from the northern end of Ponyville to the western coastline of the equestrian continent, intersecting with the undiscovered west anomaly at its furthest point. Home of the mysterious and aptly named Spirit of the Forest, the only other wildlife we have seen in the area are literally butterflies, birds, and bees, though it is likely there are far more species we have not yet glimpsed. It was also the site of an unusual incident that began around Season 7, the details of which could only be pieced together through a single scene in the episode A Royal Problem. Ponies living in the area around Whitetail Woods would learn to view the forest with fear and suspicion, as tales spread that a pack of voracious timberwolves had made themselves at home within. Over time, at least three towns bordering the region are believed to have succumbed to paranoia. Based on the population size of the average town, between 3,000 and 300,000 occupants may have resided within the area, and the vast majority of them seem to have been influenced by the same story, assuming all the descriptions are accurate. This outbreak of fear continued for at least two weeks, maybe more, although the full length of time may never be known. What is known is that the Cantalot government would eventually take a serious interest in the proceedings, soon coming to the conclusion that the locals are simply the victims of a widespread rumour, a conclusion that the delegates of the towns did not agree to, to put it lightly. As of right now, that is where the story ends. As far as we can tell, Whitetail Woods is just as peaceful now as it was before the incident took place. But just what actually happened? What could send entire towns into a panic for weeks? Were the wolves of Whitetail Woods merely a figment of the imagination? Or was there much more to the story than what was initially believed? What caused the Whitetail Woods incident? Put in simple terms, the Whitetail Woods incident could best be described as a mass panic triggered by the widespread belief in the presence of timber wolves within the local region. If our projected estimates are accurate, thousands of locals found the claim plausible enough to treat it with some concern. Typically speaking, these kinds of beliefs do not appear out of thin air, requiring a foundation with which to build on, something the area does in fact have. For one, the forest is relatively close to the Everfree, close enough to evoke a pre-existing fear of something dangerous coming from there. In addition, creatures like the legendary forest spirit might already give the forest a somewhat enigmatic feel, a factor that could plausibly predispose locals to expecting the unexpected. We even know from cases such as Zakora that implanted beliefs, whether or not they're accurate, can both spread and persist for a surprisingly long time across an entire town. This is especially true for ideas that carry an emotional weight, with fear being a particularly virulent prompt. All in all, it seems as if the area was systemically predisposed to just such an incident. All it needed was one final nudge. The question is, just what was that nudge? So far, our best explanation remains that put forward by the Cantalot government. Given what we've been able to piece together, the story regarding the wolves of Whitetail Woods may have easily just started out as just that, a story. That said, if the population projections are accurate, then how do you tell which stories are merely rumours and which ones might not be? At the very least, it is worth asking ourselves, what if the stories were true? What if the panicked rumours were actually prompted by very real sightings? Past the point of probability, everything we have to work with is mostly just speculation, as, right now, we don't really have the full chain of events. Giving the locals the benefit of the doubt, however, it does leave us with plenty of possibilities to follow up on, starting with the obvious culprit. In general, Timberwolves are regarded as a form of Golem, occupying the behaviour and role of a known animal while itself being composed of material disassociated from its counterpart. While not the only Golem we are familiar with, it is by far the most well known, mostly held together by magic and able to reconstruct itself whenever it is damaged. 
Multiple individuals can even coagulate into a larger form known as a Timberwolf King. Given that said animals can apparently choke, it is evident they still exhibit the requirement to breathe, and may even have specialized if rudimentary organs. They are always accompanied by a strong smell that is believed to result from decay, the exact origin of which is open to speculation. Curiously, their appearance seems to coincide with that of zap apples, at least around the Everfree, implying they may be fueled by the same energy source. From this, it could be that Timberwolves are seasonal in their appearance, only coming to life at a certain time of year. Their range is hard to determine, however we know they have apparently been seen in Southern Equestria within the comics universe. More often they are associated with the Everfree Forest, an area they seldom ever leave. This can easily be put down to the fact that residents have long known how to protect themselves from a Timberwolf attack driving any potential assailants back into the forest through the creation of loud noises. The closest we come to an origin for such animals comes from the Ponyville Mysteries chapter book Parrot and Panic, where it is revealed that Princess Luna created a group of Timberwolves after her return in order to guard the helmet she wore as Nightmare Moon, this in order to prevent others being corrupted by its power. As it stands, this cannot explain the initial existence of these creatures, as their presence far outdates the return of Nightmare Moon. If he regards their story as even a little bit canon, however, it does seem to positively indicate such creatures can indeed be created artificially. While they have rarely appeared on screen, their howls can still be heard as recently as Season 4, implying they are still occasionally prevalent within the area. All in all, there are three main signs that a Timberwolf is in the vicinity. Besides footprints, you would likely hear howls for some distance, and a strong smell when such creatures are close by. While they can be stealthy when they need to be, Timberwolves are far from experts in remaining undetected. Returning to the subject of the White Tail Woods incident, this leaves us with two theories. One, a small pack of Timberwolves migrated outside their usual range, possibly in search of food, only being seen or heard by a select few before either moving on or going into hibernation. Or two, an individual or group of individuals unknown were responsible for creating such a creature with the hopes of controlling it. Indeed, compliance is not unique to Timberwolves, as similar golems such as bookworms have very similar behaviour. If such creatures could be trained, it would not take much to ingrain a much more secretive demeanour. Given the scale of the panic, it could be that the parties responsible chose to hide or dismantle their creation out of fear of being discovered. If no one was yet around to investigate, no one would necessarily have found out. As we have previously indicated, the environment around Whitetail Woods is home to a nature spirit, simply dubbed the Spirit of the Forest. Taking on the role of guardian for the woodland, said being is seldom ever glimpsed to the point where its very existence is doubted by most of those who inhabit the area. That being said, it is one of the few legendary creatures that we can confirm actually exists in-universe. This raises the possibility that such an entity may have started the panic, whether accidentally or deliberately. It's unlikely a local would mistake a known mysterious creature for something not native to the area, and the spirit we know so far has tended to avoid contact with civilization at all costs. Given its relative lack of direct action, even in cases where ponies might be harming the local environment, it's not exactly clear if it would ever create a Timberwolf, assuming it could. However, this doesn't rule out the involvement of other spirits. While there is no perfect match to the Timberwolf's appearance, curiously enough, there is at least one entity that does seem somewhat similar. The Ku Sith is a legendary hound from Scottish folklore. Green in colour and supposedly the size of a small cow, the creature is mostly silent as it stalks the countryside. Occasionally, however, it will bark three times, each exclamation carrying for miles. Those who have not gotten to safety by the sounding of the third will literally be scared to death. 
While it's unlikely we'd see something quite that extreme in the MLP universe, the idea of a canine nature spirit with a bark that induces mindless fear is not far removed from the known facts of the case. Such an entity would not even have to be in sight in order to cause damage. The Timberwolf explanation possibly acting as an attempted rationalization for something the locals had no prior experience of. The only thing anyone in hearing distance would know was that something was in those woods. Something that filled them with uncontrollable terror. While it is in line with MLP's history to introduce creatures from mythology, if such an entity were really canon, how did it end up in Whitetail Woods? And what exactly happened to it? Without knowing more about nature spirits as a phenomenon, the answers remain debatable. In the Ponyville Mysteries story The Tale of the Timberwolf, we are introduced to the concept of ponies, essentially the equestrian equivalent of lycanthropy or werewolves. Despite the linguistic error, they are described as ponies who will turn into timberwolves every full moon. In the story, such a condition is implied to be generated deliberately by an outside force, most likely using magic, and if it is left uncured for too long, eventually it becomes permanent. While again, this is not necessarily canon to the main series, the fact that it occurs within a piece of officially released media is still worth noting. If such a creature was stalking the region, it would only appear at night under a full moon, at least three days every lunar cycle. As a result, by the time any investigation starts, the majority of the activity may have already ended. The only issues with this scenario are that A, we don't really know the length of time taken before the curse becomes permanent, and B, we don't really know if such a creature's existence would remain ambiguous enough to fit the established facts of the case, especially given that the were-pony of Ponyville was known for breaking into houses in order to steal food. In the Ponyville mystery story Riddle of the Rusty Horseshoe, a very similar mass panic would emerge as ponies across the town began reporting sightings of a hitherto legendary figure of local folklore, the Olden Pony. The figure would emerge out of the darkness, often only being visible to a select few at a time. Despite this, the number of cases continued to grow until the entire town was reduced to hiding within their own homes. This incident is well documented, and unlike the Whitetail Woods case, we know with 100% certainty what caused it. A type of plant called a fear fern. Its spores having the ability to manifest a pony's worst fear, the manifestation only being visible to whoever is infected. The type of fear fern that caused the Ponyville outbreak was described as a highly virulent breed, with spores that can pass from pony to pony, essentially a form of infectious hallucinogen. The similarity to the Whitetail Woods incident is almost uncanny. If the fear fern was involved, there would be little evidence left behind and a steady growth in the number of sightings over time as more ponies got infected. This would eventually plateau as the spores become too dispersed to have an effect, though by this point the damage would already have been done. Assuming the investigators didn't become infected themselves, it would appear from the outside as if the locals were merely jumping at shadows. However, there is one final and chilling aspect to this case. In Ponyville, the collective belief in the same entity actually caused it to become a real part of their world, at least temporarily. Indeed, this is implied to be a somewhat normal in-universe phenomenon, similar to the Tulpa. Even if we don't regard the books as canon, there are similar examples of collective psychology influencing the in-universe real world. Based on this description, even if the Whitetail Woods incident turned out to have been triggered by a simple rumour, there is a very real possibility that something may have been created as a result of their collective belief. Maybe the reason the locals so vehemently refused to acknowledge the rumour theory was because they had recently seen the evidence with their own eyes, considering the Cantalot government's data as being out of date. 
How this phenomenon works is still open to debate. After all, merely believing that Zakora was an evil enchantress did not make it so. Similarly, there is no guarantee the belief in a pack of timber wolves was focused enough in order to physically manifest anything. That being said, the Ponyville Fearthorn outbreak remains one of our closest parallels to date, offering a reasonable explanation that fits the in-universe lore. For all the myriad of possibilities behind this case, their accuracy all rely heavily on each of them simply being missed or ignored by any potential investigation. In the case of a long-lasting mass panic, however, it seems unlikely for something so serious to go without an in-depth study. Given that Cantalot even have the resources of a secret monster-fighting agency on their side, it seems odd to imagine them missing or ignoring any of the above options. As fun as it is to headcanon, that is about as far as we can go. In the end, the answer to whether the wolves were real or merely an illusion will likely forever remain open to the audience's imagination. Again, Occam's razor would suggest that the latter is far more likely. Whatever the true cause of such a mass panic, we can only hope that the fear has long since abated. In a world filled with large and often hostile creatures, a place as peaceful as Whitetail Woods is not something to be taken for granted. Whatever really happened, and however this strange story may have ended, it is unlikely the locals will ever view those quiet and mysterious woods the same way, ever again. Hi again. Don't worry, this won't take too long. This is mostly experimental, but I kind of wanted to build a habit of updating on any new information that has come up since the past episode aired. Those of you who watched the previous episode would remember we analysed the odd appearance of Derpy Hoos within the snow globe in the episode A Friend Indeed. Well, the mystery has actually been solved. In Volume 2 of the My Little Pony manga's A Day in the Life of Equestria, it is revealed that Derpy's presence within that snow globe resulted from a catastrophic time-space incident involving Dr. Hooves and his rival. A big thank you to Mana Minori for bringing our attention to this. For everyone else, tell me what you think. Would you like to see more ending segments like this? In any case, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.